The project of recreating the video game theme park in LEGO continues and this is the latest addition to the huge layout. It is the racetrack which appears as a shop in the video game and here in LEGO it is a module that is interactive. That is kids who are walking past can interact with this module in order to make things happen inside of it. And for this module there's a new type of interaction and that is you can push the little triggers in order to make the horses advance on the racetrack in order to get your favorite horse to win. So all of these three horses have a chance of winning and in this video I'm going to break down this module uh, that is really I'm going to tear it apart so that you can see how it works and I'm going to show you all of the mechanisms inside of it. So let's get started with that. Let's take the module out of the layout and look at it in detail. And here we have the module outside of the layout. In the front you can see I have written racetrack and it is an interactive module but instead of having the sensor here in front where the audience can interact with it in order to interact with the module I'm using the ultrasonic sensor here in the top and that is a bit nicer to look at although it does also look a bit odd to have this huge sensor here in the top you can see two other peripherals we have the light sensor here on the right side is going to detect which horse is winning the race and we have a 3x3 matrix here to the left in order to show the audience what is actually happening it shows the state of how far you are in front of the sensor and it also shows you which horse has been winning let's turn it on and then we can see it in action so i can open a door here in the back to turn on the module and go now the first thing it's going to do is reset the track so it pulls all of the horses back now on the left hand side you can see there is a plus and that means it is reading something in front of the sensor if not it is going to show the red dot in the middle so let's use our hands here and then see if we can interact with it the yellow dots really appear or show you if there's something that has moved closer. So if I move closer to the module, it triggers. Now the idea is that I'm going to have a minifig going past and the minifig can then push the three trigger points and push. It is much easier to make the cyan horse win because it is almost moving by itself even though there's nobody in front. The yellow horse is a bit more difficult to get to win, while the red horse is really difficult. It's really a challenge to get that one to win. Let's just turn it off. Oh, let's see what happens when the cyan horse gets to the end. Then it should register it using the light or color sensor. And then we should see the display here turn cyan until we have reset like that. Now it just runs the other way and we're using the rotation sensor on the motor in order to feel that we have done pushing the horses all the way back before we can restart again and you'll see the display change like that. And that is the functionality of the module. I have improved the graphics a bit since uh, the recordings I made of the layout because I like this a bit better. And I also have adjusted the ultrasonic sensor in order to make it more fun to actually play this game and interact with the module. Can I improve it further? I'm sure I can. And this is just like all other modules going to be improved over time. But I think it's good enough now to show you how it actually works. So let's start break down this module and see all the mechanisms that are actually working inside of it. I opened the door here in order to turn on the module. But I can take this whole section off. In here we have the uh, hub from the 51515 Mindstorm set, similar hub as you see in the Spike Prime. I can turn it off here and you can see the uh, firmware running on this hub is a bit odd, it's showing uh, in a strange color and that is because this is the first time I'm using Pybricks in order to run a module in this whole layout, this whole project. And I have to say this works extremely well. I really like how Pybricks have been able to make it easy to upload the firmware onto a hub and also interact with the hub since I can just turn it on. And then if I press the button again, that's how it turns on and starts. I prefer this to the LEGO standard software where you have to select your program first and then you have to turn on the program. So I think I'm going to put Pybricks on more modules in the future. It's definitely a cool project. Here in the back you can see three 
motors and three sensors. So it is completely filled to the brink with peripherals. We have the ultrasonic sensor, we have the light matrix from a spike essential set and we have a color sensor right here. Down underneath we have the three motors which I'm going to show you when I'm breaking down the module. First of all we have the motor that is going to pull the horses. I can even turn this button here in order to help that sensor or that motor turn the horses a bit if that is necessary. It hasn't really been necessary so far but it's nice to have. Here I have a little helper that can help me get the uh, trigger unstuck in the front. That has helped me when I was designing the module although I'm not sure that it's going to be necessary here. But let's break it down so you can see what actually happens inside of it. Let me put this back. Let's first take a look at the track. You can see that the minifix here can go in and push these three triggers, moving the horses. Why is that possible? Well, let's take a look at it. And underneath you can see we have a motor here. It's, it's three of these motors I'm using for this module, so the standard ones from the Mindstorm set. The motor here is actually running the uh, trigger mechanism. So if I'm using the little tool I had from before, that we can turn the trigger mechanism. And that is because we have a single axle going through, running these four gears up here. So let me keep that up. And you can see it again, turning like that. Really simple, doesn't use as much space as what you have seen in previous interactive modules. Although it's also not as fast and fun as you see in those other modules, but that is a trade-off. The triggers themselves, well, let's take a look inside. If I remove this, you can see what's happening in here. Let me just turn one of them around. You can see we have a gear here, and that is simply being pushed by these little pushers. Three of those, and let's see what's happening under this section. How do I get into this module? Well, it's not as serviceable as previous modules, so I have to actually kill it. Um, but what don't you want to do for a video? The sensor here didn't start in this position, it was actually two studs back, but I found that having it a bit forward like this makes it, makes it much better at actually registering movement in front of it. So that is that sensor, very simple setup. As for the ones here on the sides, let's see what happens if I kill this part. Okay, um, yeah. And get that away. Here you can see the color matrix. Again, just a simple sensor put on top of everything. On the left hand side, we have the color sensor. Well, let's remove this part here. And you can better see what's happening here. Let's remove our figure. If you compare this module to what you see in the video game, the only big difference is really that the figure looks different. And they have four horses in the video game instead of three, but they still only have three triggers. One of them purple instead of cyan. But we don't have these parts in purple, so I change the colors a bit. I have attached the horses to the track using handcuffs, which is quite hard, I must say. Let me just pull the uh, horse a bit forward. But it works. In that way, I don't have to use anything but the standard link elements in order to attach the horses on top. The horses are a bit crude, but I have given them a little tail. See, like this and a head and two legs that are sticking out and that's pretty much a horse. I hope that people can see the uh, what I meant with this kind of setup. When they get all the way back, they get stuck by these slopes right here. Let me remove those. And you can see we have gears underneath, but let's dive into the gears and see what's happening down there. And, okay. Here you can see how the gears 
are going from the triggers, the pushers, into what is pushing in underneath of this whole track. And when I remove this part, you can also see why I had to use this uh, big brown box in the back to hold the hub instead of putting it down into the base that I usually do in such a module. And let's remove the sensor here. Let's remove the horses. The yellow horse. And of course then you can see what's going on here. Let me remove that. I can remove the hub. And suddenly you can see a lot of gears inside of this module. And let me see. Okay. <laughs> here we go. As you can see, there are a lot of gears, and this is why there's no space for the hub down here. Let me remove this as well, and reveal even more gears. There's a motor under here, just pushing the track. And that motor, you can see a little of it right here, but not much, because it doesn't do much. It just pulls the track, nothing more. You saw the other motor before, and that is here. So I have two motors just in this section here. And that is because this single motor here is running all of these gears and this is a very crazy setup. Okay, so I showed you the trigger mechanism here. Just pushing the tracks like this. That is what they do. In the middle here, I have a lot of red gears. The red gears can roll on the axis without interacting with them. They have no persistence, so to say. The gray gears do. When you turn the axis, the gray gear is activated. So this is for the cyan, that's the first one. Then we have the yellow here in the middle. And lastly, we have the red one over here. And that is for pushing the three horses. And I have gears all the way through in order to make sure that I'm pulling from four gears at the same time to minimize slippage and just to have it, the function be somewhat reliable and nice looking. Now, when I'm pushing a horse forward and the motor isn't running, well then there is also energy being distributed here in the back. Let's take a look at that. So I have two differentials, one here and one here. This first differential goes to the yellow horse. That means if the yellow horse pushes forward without the differential moving, then the energy is transferred reversed back here which means that this one is turning and this one is interacting directly with the next differential. The next differential has two inputs and one output, so we're pushing the output. The two inputs, well, that is the cyan horse and then it is gears from a one to one and then one to one into the red horse. The gear that you see here is not really interacting with anything. It was from when I was testing the module to see what worked nicely with the gear ratios here in the back. But in other words, this gear here or this differential here is really pushing the two other horses. In other words, when I'm pushing the yellow horse forward, the two other horses are pushed backwards. Okay. The same happens with the other horses. So if I push the cyan horse forward, you can see through this differential, I push the red horse backwards, but also since the differential is pushing into this differential over here, I am pushing the yellow horse backwards. To summarize, push one horse forward, results in the other two being pushed backwards. And for that reason, I'm running this motor here a bit forward to compensate. So every time we have a push from the trigger over here through these, then I move this motor forward in order to not have the other horses that are not being pushed forward not be moved so much backwards. And it also means that if no trigger is activated, something is still moving forward. Mostly it's going to be the cyan horse because the whole mechanism to the cyan horse is really nice and loose, meaning that it has an easy time actually being pushed. The yellow horse, you can see I'm going directly to this differential and then to the yellow horse, also means that it's moving really nicely. However, the red horse needs to go through all this mechanism here in the back and has a little harder time to be moved forward. 
That is also why the red horse is the most difficult one to get to win the race, but it is also the greatest satisfaction when you actually make the red horse win, which is possible, it's just difficult. This is the mechanism of this module, showing you why it took me so long to actually design the module and make it work, or at least make it work somewhat. I still think I can improve the code for the uh, hop, but mostly because I want to make victory animations for whichever horse is winning, that would be really cool. Or you might come with suggestions in the comments below of how to improve this module. At least this is what is happening underneath of it. It's super complex from a mechanical standpoint, but also really satisfying to see everything working together. And that is what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you are going to stick along, hang on and see what I'm going to build in the future, because there's going to be other complex fun modules that I'm going to add to this theme park. For instance, I have still not built the most exciting ride of them all, and that is of course the roller coaster. I'm still waiting for parts for that, but I can assure you it will come in the future. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, have fun, and I hope to see you next time.